Good morning, Breakfast with Bacon fans. I have a show today that is, uh, I think, pretty powerful. I can always tell when it is when t Satan gets in charge of our technology. I've had probably two or three shows where it has taken us a long time, and no matter what we did, and those have ended up being the shows that have had the most views for me. So I know with my guest today, Stephen Brady, uh, I think that's what the Lord, the devil is trying to do, and you're going to find out why by listening. So first of all, Stephen Brady is a founder of Roman Catholic Faithful. He is one of the, I'd say, detective, right? Is detective well, investigator. I look into the abuse within the hierarchy. Yes, ma'am. And you are responsible, one of them that's worked on some of the sex abuse scandal in the church, and she, they don't necessarily like you so much because you do... You're kind of relentless in revealing things that the enemy wishes would stay uncovered. Is that fair? Yes, I, I go where the where the good Lord sends me, if you will. I like to think I'm being sent there because uh, stuff just drops in my lap because of what I do. And I think uh, I like to think it's for the right reasons. But yeah. uh, the farther I go in this, the farther I progress, the more information that comes to me. And it's it's the whistleblowers, the little people out there. And I, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. But uh, there's so many people out there with tidbits of information that can help us so much in the work we do. Well, considering the show we're going to talk about, I want to be positive, positive up front. For those of you watching, uh, Stephen Brady and myself love the Lord. We love our Catholic faith. Neither one of us has any intentions of leaving because we know it is the true faith. Um, but just like the Lord said to the scribes and the Pharisees, you whitewash tombs. So there are corrupt things happening. There are bad men that have infiltrated the church. There are bad men who have infiltrated um, the bishopric. I think that's how we say it, the bishopric. And um, what Stephen Brady has uncovered is going to shake a lot of us. And um, But it's meant so that we can know what's going on and we can learn how to fight it. So uh, Stephen, thank you. Uh, let's just start with this. The Roman Catholic Faith was an organization that really specializes in corruption detection in the Catholic Church. And you are right now going to talk about some details that you said are going to shake the church. Is that true? Yes. Uh, we have uh, we started off just looking at uh, 25 years ago. I was very naive looking at liturgical abuse and corruption. We felt that if we got the information to the hierarchy, they would correct the situation. Right. As a father of seven children, it was having a big impact on my children, what we were finding at the local parish and the local public school presented by Catholics. So that was 25 years ago. Now we realize the corruption is clean to the top. And yeah. it's a process we went through to come to that conclusion. And uh, it's based on the facts that we've come across. So 25 years ago, we're looking at 1998-ish, and then the pedophilia scandal kind of busted in 2002. Uh, what did you think back then when, like, well, yeah, it, I've been trying was, to tell you this. It was, it was 1995 when we got started here locally with Bishop Daniel Ryan, and his story is all public. He's deceased now. May he rest in peace. And uh, we went to Bishop Ryan trying to explain the pornographic sex education promoted by Catholic teachers in the public school. And I started writing all the parish priests in the diocese, why won't somebody do something to help me? I'm a father of seven children. And I started to hear from some of the clergy, well, don't you know? And they went on to explain that the bishop was a predatory homosexual, picking up teenage boys off the street and uh, encoursing priests into sexual relationships. And he was bringing those kind of people into the hierarchy, into the priesthood that I thought. So somewhat naive, I thought, I'll gather the information, I'll give it to the hierarchy. We never, I never intended to go public at first. But then after time went on and Cardinal George told me uh, I would get nowhere if I didn't be quiet. He offered me a relationship with the hierarchy. The Vatican ordered me to shut my mouth. And I, Cardinal uh, Bishop Lucas, when he came in, told me that my family would never be welcome at any parish unless I stopped what I was doing. So that's that made a threat. Yes. Oh, yes. And he told me, you know what you do is dangerous, don't you, Stephen? And I took that as a direct threat. So anyway, I decided I'm, I'm not going to let this go. And I continued. We eventually, through witness testimony, firsthand testimony, proved that Bishop Ryan was indeed predatory homosexual. And uh, they had to admit that. But in the final report that Bishop Lucas, Bishop Lucas took his place in so-called 
conducted an investigation, but the investigation report didn't mention homosexuality once. So it was sort of a, a whitewash, if you will, toned down at the report. But from there, it just grew because at that point, I started to realize it was the hierarchy. These people, first of all, didn't care about the souls of the faithful because they left Ryan in power. They didn't love Bishop Ryan enough, as Christ commands, to love your fellow man, to stop him from what he was doing. So it became clear to me that the corruption was cleaned through. And if you will allow me, I might like to, like to caveat that or explain a little bit about uh, the hierarchy, if I may, just for a Please. second. Please, yes. Well, people have to realize, I don't overthink the situation. I'm not an academic. I'm not a scholar. I'm just a plain, simple Catholic father, grandfather. And I look at things pretty black and white pretty simply. But if the, if the individuals in the hierarchy aren't there because of a true love of Christ and the church, they're there for some corrupt reasons. Because if, if you don't love Christ and his church, what are you doing in the hierarchy? Because everything you do is done in the name of God because of the position you hold. So if, and secondly, most of the hierarchy I realize is not even Catholic by definition. By that I mean, if you promote sacrilege, you can't, you can't believe in hell because for example, Gregory, Cardinal Gregory giving communion to Biden and the Pope telling him to work it out. There's a bunch of problems right here because first of all, the, the, the most evil thing you can do is try to send somebody to hell or lead them down the path to hell. And when, a, when Gregory gives communion to Biden, he's committing a sacrilege. He's doing it publicly. It's, it's sending a negative message to all our young people. And he's also telling us he hates Biden. By that I mean, you've got to be a Catholic to understand this because if you're giving somebody, you're promoting them to commit sacrilege and you're committing sacrilege, I mean, it's it's such a grave offense, especially done by by a member of the hierarchy. So that's what I mean by by definition. Let me hold you right there, though, for those listening who don't understand, because there's so many Catholics that are poorly catechized, including me, who went to Catholic school for eight years. Basically, the Bible says and Jesus says in the gospel that anyone who eats my bread and drinks my blood unworthily. Uh, drinks condemnation upon themselves. So what that basically means is that if somebody is in mortal sin, if they are accepting or promoting something that is is blasphemous or a mortal sin, right? right. Then they take communion. It's not doing so. If, if I've gone to confession, I've got a clear conscience, my soul is clean, and I take communion, it will edify me, it will build me up. But if I am in mortal sin and I take communion, then it actually destroys me saying you are condemning yourself so this is what stephen brady means when he says yeah. you know if you know for instance joe biden is approving of something the church condemns which is abortion and then he does so publicly and pushes the laws it is the bishop or any priest's responsibility to say sorry i can't because of my love for you i can't let you take this or you'll be drinking and eating con condemnation yeah. so that's a little bit um how i've explained right. it but to let people. me take that a step further because so many catholics out there as you just mentioned are uncatechized and i always get this well let him without sin cast the first stone i said first of all you're talking about a bible passage that refers to murder not judging somebody. Secondly, we're not judging their soul. We're not judging their motives. We're judging their actions. And we have an obligation to judge their actions. For example, I judge the actions of my wife before I married her. I judge the actions of my doctor. Before. I don't hire a doctor, go to a doctor that's killed 30 patients. I don't hire a babysitter that's been in jail for, for rape. So, I mean, you judge people's actions every day. So them throwing out this thing about, like the Pope said, who am I to judge? That's so misleading. That's so exactly. damning. But most of all, when the Pope was, was presented with this situation with Gregory giving communion to Biden, and he said, you guys work it out, basically, is what he said, that that is such a scandal, because that tells the public, that tells the world that either Catholics don't believe it's the real presence, or they're a joke, or not. It, it, and none of them believe. And it creates right. such a scandal because this corrupt hierarchy, in my opinion, this corrupt hierarchy has created, created this corrupt culture because they haven't stood tall with the issue of abortion, gay marriage, so on and so forth, because 
I mean, when, when I grew up as a kid, there was a time when, when you, if you were a teenager and had a girlfriend, the greatest thing that could happen is she'd hold your hand. I mean, of course, that's back in the 60s. You're and, like 100 years old, right? Yeah, heaven, heaven forbid she let you put your arm around her shoulder. You know, and that was it. You know, then you presented yourself to father before you dated her. You, the, 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 the family father, you, you got a haircut, you tucked your shirt in. Look how far we've come today. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, to the accepting nature. And, and this is where I tell folks, and a lot of them don't like it. I start off my talk on feminism with this very thing. I said, ladies, you're never going to be equal to a man. I said, never. And I start to get a lot of anger, but I said, you know why? Because for a woman to be equal to a man, she's got to come down three or four levels. I said, who did God give the greatest gift ever to? Life bearer. Yeah. He gave it to Mary, a teenage girl. And I said, the secrets are held with the teenage girls right now because, and, and I get a little pushback from this, because if they start demand, Dr. Alice von Hildebrand had a lovely speech on feminism. And she said, the job of the woman is to tame the barbarian man. And that's true. Men yes. by their nature are a little more rough, a little more outgoing. But to gain the company of a female and eventually lead to marriage and dating is a preparation for marriage, they would clean up their act. That female. Absolutely. Wasn't... I teach that communication female. between the sexes. So I know what you're saying. Let's go back. Let's stay on this topic yeah. here because it is so powerful. And I don't want to waste any of your time um, going around this. So you when did you found roman catholic faithful was that back when all that happened 25 years ago or did this just skyrocket so much that you're like this has to be no 1996 when i started off making public statements people started sending me money donations five dollars ten dollars i shouldn't say little old ladies because I'm, I'm not a little old man but i'm an old man now but i mean so i had to form a corporation to account for irs for this income i had coming in although it was very small and that's when RCF was founded because it dealt mainly with the faith. And yeah. it just snowballed from there. And once I realized, once I realized that it, the sexual abuse, the homosexual activity is just a symptom, a symptom of a much bigger problem. That's the, the corrupt individuals that have found their way into the hierarchy, their power, it's power and money. That's it. And what flows from that power and money is homosexuality, sex abuse, drugs, stealing, theft, everything. That's when I started to look at, I started to do public record searches, legal, uh, of uh, certain individuals. I won't tell you how I choose these individuals. And that's when I started to find some hidden corporations set up by a group of bishops in this country. They're perfectly legal form corporations. But the, the first one I found was CMG, Catholic Mutual Group. It's based out in Omaha. And there's a $9 million building out there their office is in. They own, this group of bishops own this $9 million building and they claim to be a church, although there's no chapel inside the building, there's no pastor. But because they claim to be a church, they don't have to file Pay taxes. their tax papers. So this is a group of bishops that's not connected directly to any diocese that I can find legally. Where did their money come from? It has to be coming from different dioceses. Where is their money? And they, they do have... They do have some insurance business, but they claim not to have insurance agents directly paid for, but that isn't quite 100% the truth because my private investigator found anyone otherwise. But here you've got a group of bishops. McCarrick was one of them, uh, Supich, Lucas. Uh, there's a few bishops that were never involved. I've spoken to a few bishops who don't know anything about these corporations. So they claim to be a self-insurance corporation for the, for the hierarchy. They've been around a lot of years, legally formed corporations, but there's no accountability. You don't know where their money's coming from and you don't know where it's going. So hypothetically, hypothetically, just off the top of my head, for example, if I'm a bishop and I want to hide $10 billion, I can send it to this corporation set up by the bishops right. because it doesn't have to report anything. What do they do with it? Well, they can send it to the Vatican. They can send it to a, an island somewhere off the Caribbean coast. They can do whatever they want. So this in and of itself was a problem because one thing folks have to understand, if the church was truly acting as they should, they wouldn't need a lawyer. They wouldn't need a criminal court. They wouldn't need a civil court because if there was a problem, they would deal with it swiftly and properly. And that's not been the case, which shows, in my opinion, the corruption that exists. But 
when I started talking about this corporations, and there's about 10 or 11 connected corporations I've found so far, they're legally formed again, but there's no way to know where their money comes from or where it goes, and they're not directly connected to any diocese. A certain individual from Jordan saw this interview I did on Church Militant, and he contacted me. And I told my wife, only by the grace of God, because out of all the people in the world, this kind-hearted Catholic family man contacted me. And uh, it was it was rather moving, if, if to say the least, but his name was Benjamin Sognani. He's a an American citizen. He's living in California, but he was rather prominent citizen in Jordan, in the Holy Land as well. He set up motels, hotels, rented of them for companies, and he's now suing the Vatican and the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, and he's suing the uh, Secretary of State, Perlin. He's suing them because back around 2012, he was asked by the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, it's changed, it's, it was a different Latin Patriarch back then, whom he was related to. The Latin Patriarch came to California and asked him to run, to manage uh, 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 American University of Madaba, which is a town in Jordan. So he said he would. And they wanted him to run the financials, hire, fire, set it up, build it, so on and so forth. The university is there. And his uh, his wife and him said, you know, we're Catholic. We're a good Catholic family. They, they were honored that they were asked to do right, such a thing. Right. So he gave up his business and went to Jordan. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the first things they did was give him full power of attorney for the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem and over the college. People have to realize what that means. He had access to anything and everything in the Holy Land, and he had the authority to make any deals or any transactions. But still somewhat naive, Benjamin was honored that they would do this. But then, during this process, they kept saying 20 million was coming in from the Vatican or from here, they got money coming in. He had bills to pay because he was getting a fleet set up for buses for the college, funding the labs, setting everything up. So anyway, the money wasn't coming in like he thought. So he, on the contracts he had, on his family's uh, life insurance policies and what have you, he borrowed millions of dollars to pay, I think it was seven, eight million to pay the first batch of bills because he had contracts so he could borrow the money, use that for collateral at the bank. But then when the problem came up, they were asking him to do deals. With to entities, do what? To do what? To conduct deals, transactions. Got it. Financial transactions with entities, corporations, that he had no knowledge of. And uh, they wanted him to do a deal with an Austrian oil company for millions of dollars, an American oil company. And uh, then they asked him to do some deals with the Chinese, a $400 million deal and a $500 million deal. All this information are public. They're in the court records. I sent you the link that can be made public, but there's thousands of more documents that haven't been made public yet. And I've seen some of them, but anyway, Benjamin says, no, the deal with the Chinese they wanted him to do was called green city. It was so-called supposedly to set up the Chinese were going to build a, from what I understand, the Chinese were going to build some kind of recreational area around the college in Jordan. He said, Stephen, I was doing deals and transactions for stuff that was never done, work that was never done. And this $900 million deal with the Chinese, he refused. He said it was money laundering. And I was involved in a lot of meetings with a lot of officials within the Vatican. And it was money laundering. It was clear. And he said, I went to them. He met with Franco, I think was the former, the current archbishop. He met with uh, Pizza Bella, who's the present uh, patriarch, Latin patriarch of Jerusalem. What people don't understand and don't realize is the Holy Land is in the guardianship of the royal family of Jordan. That was a political deal worked out by the United States government and other governments to keep the Palestinians and everybody happy. So uh, the, the Jordanians have a lot of power and control there, but the Latin patriarch close to the Vatican, close to the Pope, controls the religious aspect of it. So this is a bishop or a cardinal when you say the Latin patriarch. Latin patri he's a, yes, he's a... He's a patriarch, but he's, he's like a cardinal, right. and he controls the Holy Land, Jerusalem, and the whole area. But he's but he is a consecrated priest. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. 
So Benjamin said, enough is enough. I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. He said, I know what we're doing is wrong. I'm not going to be a part of it. I did this out of love for my church and my Catholic faith. And uh, they said, fine. But he was told strictly not to tell anyone of the deals he did for them. These financial deals with oil companies, with the Chinese. And but now they're part of a court record. Benjamin is reluctant. He didn't want this to go public. That's why, in, in a sense of the secular press, that's why he came to me. So, but also, Benjamin was was wealthy. He'd worked hard all his life, and uh, the hierarchy, with the help of some individuals in the government or the political realm, if you will, within Jordan, they confiscated his homes, his cars, all his bank accounts in Jordan. He was living here at the time as a naturalized citizen. So they took everything from him and they refused to pay the 20 million they owed him. And they owed him millions of dollars. I think it's somewhere around 30 million, if I'm not mistaken, they owe him. And uh, there's another thing about Benjamin folks need to know. His father was an antique dealer in Jordan years ago. His father's deceased now. His father gave the Dead Sea Scrolls to the church. His family could be billionaires, but because they were Catholic, he had these, and as the women in the family told him, his father, you have to give this to the church. This is churches. And so he did. And so that they've given all to the church. They believe in the Catholic faith. And here they used him. They used him. The hierarchy used him to do some stuff that he truly believes, and court documents point out, were corrupt, was criminal and basically centered around money laundering. Now, where the money laundering is going, where the, where the money's going, we don't have any idea what they're using it for, but- We suspect. Once once it goes to the Vatican, it's not, it, it can't be traced. Because? because? The church hierarchy doesn't have to file tax reports. You know, they don't have like, like I'm a non-for-profit. I have to file a 990 tax report every year. Where my money goes, the IRS can track completely where it comes from and where it goes. But see, the church is given leeway on that. It doesn't have to. So you have no idea how much money they have coming in or where it goes. And as far as laundering money, for example, if I wanted to get some money, there's a lot of places it's illegal to do business. Venezuela, Cuba, Palestinians. So, but if, if someone wants to get money to some of these places, you find an entity that can get it there without being traced. And that's where the Catholic, the churches come in, if, if that was the case. Now, if you go a little bit before, further than that, and it's just the idea that the people in the Holy Land, and Benjamin explained this to me so clearly, these are people that can't publicly speak out against their hierarchy or the priests or the bishops because in the Holy Land, and Benjamin gave me a few examples, very scandalous, I'm not going to repeat here, but he said, if you speak out against a member of the hierarchy, the church comes out against you publicly. And then your whole family turns on you for daring to, daring to speak against the church. That's why the persecution is so great within the Holy Land. But more than that, more than that, it's the place where Christ walked. I mean, the Holy Land is the holiest of the holies. And this is where the Vatican is working right now based on court documents that are public, that Benjamin has made public through his attorneys, this is where they're laundering all this money and setting up corporations, according to the documents of Benjamin, to launder money. So this is something, it's a problem because getting some, getting a government agency to prosecute is, is difficult because the federal government, well, for example, when Biden is giving Holy Communion by a cardinal, and when the Pope, according to Biden, says, you're fine, you're good with the church, you can go on receiving communion, those two guys, they've got to be in league together to some degree, the Democratic Party and the Catholic hierarchy. And that creates a, a sort of a conflict because if the Democratic Party is in power, I don't think they will take on the Catholic hierarchy in any way. Another example is I know two gambling, illegal gambling operations going on within a, within an archdiocese in this country. The feds have confirmed to me and the state agencies that they are operating illegally, but they're trying to decide on jurisdiction. That's been two years ago. 
Wow. They've done nothing. So I know firsthand about cover-ups, both political and within the church. So basically, that's where we're at today is you've got a hierarchy. Again, they're not Catholic by definition. By that, I mean. They may claim they're Catholic, just like Biden claims he's Catholic. But if you're promoting mortal sin, sure. promoting sacrilege, you don't love Christ. You don't love your fellow man because you're trying to send him to hell. It's a contradiction. And I like to tell folks, I don't like to tell them, but the greatest evil committed is the evil committed in the name of God. Yes, that's true. And every action done by a member of the hierarchy is done in the name of God because of the office they hold. It's destroying. There is, and I say this is the biggest thing to ever come about because it, it saddens me. There's no greater institution in this world. There's no more important organization in this world than Christ and his church. Now, there may be a lot of people that want to disagree with that, but that's fine. But that's from a Catholic perspective. And it was made clear. I mean, but so when you've got a number of people who have infiltrated into the Catholic hierarchy, and they're doing the things they're doing. And I said earlier, they shouldn't need a lawyer. No, exactly. they shouldn't need a lawyer because if uh, St. Damien had a uh, solution for homosexuals within within the uh, priesthood. And, you know, the, you'd isolate them away in a convent somewhere in a, in a place to pray and do a life of penance and prayer. But today they're protected. Now They're put into schools with little children. Like you, you look at McCarrick. And this is this is this is the this is such a proving moment. No one loved that man enough. I knew about McCarrick twenty years ago, but who am I? No one in the hierarchy loved that man enough, the fellow member of the hierarchy, to stop him from what he was doing. What did they do? They left him in power. They helped him climb the ladder of corruption to have more power to abuse more people sexually abuse more people as well that's proven now so uh, there again you can't be a catholic you can't you can't love christ and fluff somebody's pillow when they're on their way to hell and that's what he's doing and, and again i don't want these people to tell me i'm judging i'm judging their actions Absolutely. i actually feel sorry for mccarrick because uh, that man was on a path that leads straight to hell objectively speaking and none of his what was his family where was the hierarchy? Where was the Pope? And uh, that's, when you look at this entire situation, you see the depth of the corruption within the Catholic hierarchy. And it's about power and money, in my opinion. Yeah, all that's three things, that's... sex, power, and money. And they're all tied yeah. together in this case. Well, once you get power and money. It's, you get it's all the sex like, you want, right. Yeah, unfortunately, all these Hollywood elites that kill themselves over the years, the wonderful actors, good people, when you when you can't buy any more sex, any more drugs, you know, whatever, I mean, there's no place else you to go. Yeah, nothing else and to that, go. That's, that's right. what people don't realize. It's money is not the, you know, true happiness doesn't yeah. come from money. But the thing I'd like to stress the most with some of the people, especially your audience, the greatest, the greatest offense, the greatest sin, the greatest that you've got to believe to know this, the greatest wrong you can do is for somebody is lead them to hell yeah. or fluff their pillow on their way to hell because there is no worse fate. I mean, being shot in the head is not as bad as going to hell. Right. You know, if, if you're a true Catholic, it's awful. It should never happen. And God help the person that committed the crime. But for example, Cardinal Chaput just made the comment about uh, giving communion to Biden. And he said it was very divisive. Now, think about that. Committing a sacrilege is very divisive. That's like a bank robber who shoots a teller and kills a teller, being told by a police officer, well, that was unnecessary. I mean, it, it, it makes it so trivial. Right. And you're, you're talking about a sacrilege. You're spitting in the face of our Lord. So I have no respect for Shaput. I think he no. ought to be ashamed of himself. Well, and your your faith is apparent. I mean, obviously, but I wanted to ask you, you know, they threatened you, right? You've been threatened before. Uh, you've come, this has become your life. I've never asked you what you did before this, but what, if there's documents out here already, what, 
when does it get to the point where they want this is going to sound this is a very theoretical question but you're still out there you're still blowing the whistle um how close to the wound do you have to get before you know you're in grave danger because here you are doing shows with me i've seen you on church militant i've seen you elsewhere and you are digging deep do they believe that they still have you don't have enough are they waiting for this court case to go to court and then maybe well, you know, see I don't, what happens? I hope and pray that no one ever is stupid enough or evil enough to try to do any harm to anyone involved. But that being said, these documents out there are public. If anything, uh, they're in the court record. Just the small part of them are in the court record. The Vatican knows that Benjamin has thousands of more pages of documents. He was the Latin patriarch of Jerusalem, power of attorney. He had access to everything. So they know he's got... When he left, when they forced him out, he took the documents with him. And so if anything would happen to Benjamin for say, that would make this case blow up because of the fact of who he is and the documents he has. Then they would all become public. Uh, he was recently offered billions of dollars. To sell By whom? The Vatican. To and, turn over the documents or what? Well, just to end the lawsuit. And part of that settlement would have been probably keep your mouth shut, but he turned it down. I forget how many millions he was offered. It was three, four, seven million. I don't know. But they owe him yeah. 20 million anyway. Yeah. I asked him, why didn't you take it? He said, Stephen, I don't want to leave my children dirty money. And he said, I want the truth to come out. And he said, I'll go to the day I die fighting to get the truth out. So I said, you know, that's that uh, noble. That says a lot. But as far as my own, you know, I've got to trust in the good Lord. I mean, I'm in so far when this stuff comes to me, I hope and pray that it's coming from the good Lord. The Holy Spirit's given me this stuff. And people say, well, how do you plan this? I said, I don't. It never works out the way I plan it. It works out better. And you're talking to a guy who's, who's faced death three times. The last time I was laying on a trauma room table, tied down, all the doctors were sure I was dead. I was going to die. I had a fractured skull from a motorcycle wreck. It wasn't my fault. And uh, they gave me last rites. You don't realize how, that, how much that changes a person, but you start believing in miracles. My son was killed on the same highway the year before, and he had a seat belt and an airbag. So, I mean, there's a lot of reflection there. I don't want to bring my own personal experiences into it too much, but... There's a lot of reflection there, and it changes your whole way of, of looking at life. And uh, I've got problems within my family. I've got seven children. Some have left the church. I'm no different, no better than anybody else. Right. But the Lord I'm has chosen educated, you. I'm less educated than most people. The difference is I don't care what people think of me, and I look at things differently. I'm not any better than anybody else. I'm just different. Now, for whatever reason, I don't know, but I want to reach out to some of the, a group from Ireland once contacted me just to help people understand. They wanted to use my name a few years back and wanted to use RCF and our methods to fight the corruption within the hierarchy there. I said, why me? Because Mr. Brady, his exact words, we know you care and we know you'll do something even if it isn't successful. So it gives you an idea of, of how much people are reaching out. They're desperate for help, and they can't find it within yes. the hierarchy. It is David and, and Goliath, Stephen. It's well, David it and Goliath. The, it makes the situation so bad right now. But when Ryan was brought down before any of this started, before anybody else was involved in the situation, I was disliked, maybe even hated by a lot of Catholic groups. They didn't and who was, was brought crazy. down? When Bishop Daniel Ryan was Daniel down, Ryan, got it, yes. I was going after him, and all this is public. And I, I, I pity the poor man because none of his staff loved him enough to stop him. None of the hierarchy did. I didn't realize at the time everybody was involved. But when he came down, most Catholic organizations thought I was nuts, didn't want anything to do with me, and that was fine. That's their prerogative. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I'm going to do what's right. Exactly. And uh, But anyway, so it, it's changed now where they realize the corruption is there. But I think it's reached that point with this money laundering and the Vatican corruption. There's a lot of people out there 
that don't want to touch that. They don't. This is the Vatican. You can't do this. This involves the whole land. Yeah. But that's exactly why you have to get that's involved. Right. And it's not me. I sent you the link to the court documents, a majority of them. There's still a thousand more pages out there that you can't see. But this is public record now. The federal government, in my opinion, should get involved because... I know of, I have bank account numbers. I have the bank names. I know of deals that were made, where they were made, in which diocese, with which cardinal sitting there at the table. Uh, the AUM, the uh, American University in Madaba, which was the university, was formed and incorporated in New Hampshire. But it's in Jordan. It's got three different names. Money was borrowed on, credit was, was made on. But a lot of folks don't realize that big oil companies contribute a lot of money to American higher education and get a great tax write-off under certain circumstances. So that's probably why the, the, some of the deals were made with some of the oil companies. But what I'm saying is all in the court documents that I've had the benefit. I had to meet Benjamin and I had to meet his family when I found out about these court documents because it was hard for me to grasp and understand. But yeah. then when you talk to the man, and his, his wife especially, because I told my wife, women's intuition, there's nothing better than women's intuition. And when you speak to the wife, you find out the real, the real reality of things because of how it does the family, how it breaks down the family. So this stuff is public. I don't think uh, there's anything they can do to stop it. They're going to have, they've already tried to offer it through arbitration, Benjamin, some money. So if, if uh, I drop dead of a heart attack tomorrow, it's still going on. There's still other people with the information I have. Benjamin's court documents are there. His documents that are still not public will go public at that point. So I think there's, uh, you know, there's, well, we've got to trust in God. We've we got to do. Be what I what I get to is I keep saying David and Goliath because this is huge. You're dealing with the entire Vatican. You're dealing with corrupt government officials. You're dealing with thousands of bad people in very high ranks. And you're a little David in your office who is uncovering filth and people are coming to you. That can only be the grace of God. That can only be something God says, just be obedient, just do as I ask. And I will uncover this because God will not rest while his church is being made a mockery of. And he's, I believe he's in the process of putting things together. Ever since McCarrick scandal came public in 2018, dominoes have been falling yeah. in, in well, revealing. You're absolutely right. And I think, and that's where a lot of people, because of the loss of faith and the, because of the corruption of the hierarchy, there's been such a loss of faith. People really, they can go to church every Sunday, but they really don't believe in the power of God, the Holy Spirit, right. and, and the miracles, if you will, because I have met some people. I'm a nobody. I was invited to a medical convention in 2000 in Pittsburgh, and I felt so out of place because all these doctors and nurses and kids were talking so far over my head, but they welcomed me there with opal arms, open arms. The research I did on homosexuality within the hierarchy, they used for a letter they wrote, a piece they wrote on the treatment of homosexuality. I've met uh, judges, prosecutors. Uh, I was asked to train investigators for a, uh, uh, I believe it was Wisconsin, a prosecutor up there. He asked me to train his investigators years ago. And I said, why? He said, because of your success rate. I said, that's where the rub comes in because it's not me. I mean, things, I do give it a little push. Things seem to fall in my lap for a reason. I, I believe the good Lord has grace a hand. And I like to think he does by the grace of God. That was one of the, the first stories I ever did. Paul LeCruz wrote for the wanderer. He actually wrote the story. And I said, it's only by the grace of God. Could I have found my way? This group Ruth of people, Tangled such as Mike. yourself, right? I mean, you know, in Baltimore, the, the the set of circumstances that led me to Baltimore, and to hook up in that little way with the Michael Vores, him inviting me there. I mean, the the chain of events I had no planning of. Exactly. I mean, it's just it just happened, and it's happening every day. Me meeting this Jordanian family. I mean, it's it's out of the blue. Yes. Of all the people in the world, he talked to me. 
I mean, that that's mind-boggling in and of and itself. And that just shows the Lord, the Lord doing what he has to do. And Hold unfortunately, on. so many people don't understand that today. Right. And uh, it's so true. And uh, I like the way you put the introduction because the, the faith, my faith, when I got out of the service and then I got married and the priest got a hold of me and the Father Switek, and I, I hadn't met my wife yet, and, and uh, I wanted to get back in line with the faith. And uh, he stopped me from going to communion one day. He said, you can't go. He made me mad at first. But then as he explained it later on, I realized that man loved me enough to tell me the truth. And uh, when I met my wife, I introduced him to him, and, and he talked to her and said, yeah, she's a keeper. You can marry her. Aww. But he said uh, he taught me a lot about life because him and Father Peter Muscari, who's also deceased, because Father John Harden was a wealth of information. But uh, Father Muscari told me, he said, these bishops, they have no faith. He said, when they do all this fundraising, $24 million, the Diocese of Springfield did some time back when Father was alive, he said, they have no faith. Don't they realize that God would bless them if they were doing what they should have been doing? Right. You look at the billions of dollars the hierarchy spends. There's $28 million they're going to spend on stuttering the Eucharist. Now, how many billions of dollars did Christ have to raise to explain the Eucharist? <laughs> and the Pope is the vicar of Christ. If he can't public, he can get on a pedestal, all the press will be there, and he can proclaim the truth, and it's done. You know, there's, there's no 28 million. So these people have no faith because they have to raise, they've got to have lawyers. If you're a man of Christ, if you're the vicar of Christ, if you're a descendant of the apostle, what do you need a lawyer for? Exactly. What do you let, need millions of dollars for lawyers for? Let me ask what do you. you need? Yeah, let me break ahead. in. Let me break in. What did you do? What was your job before you became a detective? Were you a detective before? Because you've already explained to us you're a dad, a husband, <laughs> and you saw something happening and, and had a voice, and your voice wasn't being respected. Well, I, well, what I, my attitude was formed by my father, may he rest in peace, a simple man that supported his family. He had a job. He met a lot of movie stars in the time. He worked for a production company, but his office was once blown up with 12 sticks of dynamite. Fortunately, he wasn't in the office at the time. But I started out, uh, I was drafted in the Army during the Vietnam War. Well, I was, I was attending Purdue and Indiana universities, and I had a low lottery number during the Vietnam War. So I dropped out because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So they go ahead and draft me. They drafted me. It was towards the end of the war. They asked me what I wanted to be in. And I said, oh, construction, heavy equipment operator if I had a choice because uh, I worked construction in high school. So what they did, they put me in the military police and they wanted to send me to West Point because I scored so high on all my testing. And I said, no, I didn't want to give them 10 years. I didn't know where the war was going. So they put me in military police. Then an opportunity came up and uh, I got a secret security clearance from the FBI. And then I was looking after top secret weapon systems for the federal government. It was glorified guard duty most of the time. I was a 21 year old kid with a gun that nobody could touch. And it was glorified guard duty. By that, I mean, people didn't mess with you, mm -hmm. you know, because they didn't know what we were doing. I right. signed documents, never to reveal the details, who, what, when, or where. But after that, I got out of the service and I came to Petersburg, Illinois, and I, I met my wife. And uh, I was in the, I started a construction company, was in the construction business for about 20 years, building homes, remodeling. The most I ever had working for me was maybe five individuals. So it was small. <coughs> anyway, the, uh, I met my wife and uh, I met, uh, this is truly by the grace of God. I'm at a gas pump one day and I met a, a, a gentleman from Sicily and uh, he was looking for a place to rent. I just bought a building since I did a lot of business for the bank. Properties would come up uh, repossessed. I could get for next to nothing and they'd right. finance it and I'd remodel it. And Anyway, so he wanted to rent a place for a pizza place. So I rented him a place and did a handshake, the Sicilian man. And uh, we became very close to the family. And we've got an open invitation to attend, attend his home in, in Sicily and visit his family. And my wife eventually took over the pizza place in 86. And uh, he offered it to us. And I told my wife, well, you can take it over. 
but I'm never working in a pizza place. Well, I run the ovens now every night, every weekend, night, <laughs> or I help out in the pizza place. But that's, and then when, when this came about with the sex education scandal in the public schools, they were messing with my children. Yes. It was the public schools, it was pornographic, but it was Catholic teachers and school board members that were pushing it. It would then hand out communion at the local parish. And I couldn't tell you, because of its broadcast, I couldn't tell you some of the stuff that was presented to these children because it's too bad. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't speak to a lady this way. Anyway. And what year are we looking at? Pardon? Ish? What year was that? That was 1995. 96, yeah. I, and I can only imagine because I'm in Virginia here and we're looking at Loudoun County where my daughter's children are and she's looking at private schools because of the fact that they have in children and little kids five six seven um i mean i don't i don't know how much i can say i know i know the yeah, case I the bad know. stuff i i'm like how much can i say on here but it's horrifying it, things that when i was been, that age well, i didn't know existed with gay marriage and with the gender thing they've, they've accepted so much you know using boys and girls bathrooms the hierarchy it's teaching children how to do those things let's just be clear and destroy the culture and that's where we're at today but it's uh anyway I, I, well uh, so what should people what should people be looking for because what should we do you know this is obviously public news in in a sense not because right. you filed the documents but the media won't pick this up because the media just like in the epstein scandal in the what's her name is jelaine i don't know how to pronounce it yes I know you know there's a blackout because they are so in bed with the bad guys that they don't want to talk about all the scandal, all of the sex trafficking, that if the media wanted a good story, this is the best story of, of the of the century, and yet they're refusing. So the same thing with what you're reporting. Well, Benjamin has been approached by several national and international press organizations, and but he didn't want to, he didn't want the secular press to chew it up and spit it out like it's nothing. Right. And he came to me as a Catholic, and he, he liked the way I, I conducted myself. So I think when people see these documents, but in time, uh, I'll say this much. Uh, within the next month, I'm going to be interviewing someone. I'm traveling. Who claims to have investigated Vatican money laundering back in the 80s and also the murder of a pope. And so this all came about because of shows like yours and Church Militant. There's always, there's people out there that know all the secrets. Right. A little bit here, a little bit there. You'd be surprised how a wealth of information could be found if the cook of every bishop, if the yard, the, the laundress, yes. the, the gatekeeper of every bishop, the housekeeper of every bishop, the driver of every bishop would come forward. Because believe me, that's where some of my best, the best tip I ever got was a janitor who told me about going through the garbage and because he collected stamps and was in a parish in Joliet and found that the pastor had half a million dollars in out-of-state bank account with a secretary. Now, for a priest that's making 20 grand a year and a secretary not making much more, for them to have half a million in an out-of-state account when you're working at a parish that takes in millions of dollars a year. Well, I was on the phone to the janitor when the feds raided the place. I'll say that much. And uh, so it's, it's the little people. There's information out there. But getting back to your question, if, it, if, that, if the hierarchy, if the government doesn't get involved, if the hierarchy doesn't clean up their act, and if the press doesn't start covering this, it's not going to matter because it's all coming out. And yeah. not, not by me, by someone else. But the information I've released is the tip of the iceberg. I have information on politicians. High-ranking Republican also that have a big problem with child abuse. And this information comes in. And what's so sad to say some of the most honest people I've met are street kids and prostitutes. Yeah. They tell you the hard truth. You may not want to hear it, but yeah. they tell you the hard truth. And some of the most dishonest people I've ever met was in the Catholic hierarchy. Yeah. 
That's so sad. It's pure evil. But God knows what God is doing. One little story. I'm sitting in Jacksonville prison interviewing Frank Bergen, who was a victim of a 15-year-old of uh, Bishop Daniel Ryan. Bergen was adopted out of his St. Louis family into another family in another town, and he ended up on the street because of abuse at the second family, not, not his parents. <coughs> and I'm sitting there in a prison. He damn near brought me to tears. He said something that moved me. He said, I ran away from home at the last time. He was hooked on drugs. He was selling his body to survive. I ran away from home for the last time at 15. I prayed my mother would come get me one more time, and she never came. I mean, if you think about that as a parent, I mean, it, it tears you up. And I was taking a, a female, a prostitute, to see a priest. I'd interviewed her one night. She had a wealth of information because they lived on the street. And uh, she carried around a book called The Imitation of Christ with her all the time. She was abused in state-run organizations. And I looked over her, and she provided a wealth of information. She was crying. And I said, why are you crying? She said, Mr. Brady, are you using me? In a sense, I guess I, I says I am. I need the information you have, but I'm not using you in a bad way. But if you, this to me, it formed my mind for dealing with some of these people. I felt ashamed of myself for look. I'm not talking about these panhandlers. There's a lot of communists right, out right. there, but I'm talking about these street kids and underprivileged people that end up because they're the street out there all because, because they were abused and unloved in some way. <laughs> and. But when you look, I felt ashamed of myself for looking down on some of these kids and people before. But when you start, I interviewed a dozen or so former street kids, inmates. When you realize and find out what they went through as a child in their own home yeah. or in their society, yeah. the very people that should have been helping them were paying them for sexual favors. I mean, it is the worst kind of evil it is. because they were held down. They were held down by so-called men of God. And they forget, they forget yeah. the, you know, I, I think of this all the time, they forget that the simple pleasures, this life is so fleeting that when they answer to God, you know, it is said that, that the punishments that priests will receive or bishops will receive are just so much worse than anybody else because they were the ones that were in the position of power. And we have to watch out. And I'm just so grateful you're watching out. But for the act, average person watching this video, a lay, a lay Catholic, uh, give us some marching orders. What should we do right. to help? Not one more penny to the Catholic hierarchy. Not one more penny raised by the, the Vatican or by the hierarchy or anyone to go fund anywhere. Cut the money off. Because when the bishops don't have their fine dining, and their mansions, their million dollar mansions That's like right. they've got in New York and Washington, it's not gonna be so attractive to them anymore. So that will also, <clears throat> excuse me for one second, call the priests out on their nonsense. And I told folks in Baltimore, I said, go to the bishops when you protest, like when you protest misconduct or something, go to the cathedral like with Gregory and have your signs have something to do with your saving. You want to save him from going to hell and let the press ask you what you're talking about because most of the press don't even have no idea. That's they true. They have no idea. And so explain that because by the grace of God, nothing, I have found my way to this position. I get calls from a lot of press and whatnot thinking how, how did I ever come to this point in life? only by the grace of God. So, Absolutely. If, but I want all the, I want the bishops to worry about every cook, every housekeeper, every gardener, every driver. And if you know a little secret, just any, and it's not, you're not doing something evil. I don't make stuff public except as yeah. a last resort, only when it's been verified. That's right. Because I don't want to go to hell for destroying people's reputations. Right. You know, wrong for slander absolutely right. it's a command. and uh, but at the same time you've got to you've got to stick your neck out you you can't you can't you've got to stop worrying about what your friends are going to say or if you're being invited to a i don't get invited to dinner parties with the local cliques like too much anymore anything like that so they've got to cut off the money confront their priest and their bishop properly 
No, I mean, don't. Don't corner him. And, yeah, yeah, correct. Right. Be Christ-like. But do it properly and make him squirm. Right. And then any tidbit of information you have, get it to the proper people. Who are the you proper can't... people, though? Who well, come besides my, you? Come, come my way. I mean, okay. How do they get a hold of you? <laughs> what's a what's um, a rcf.org. So the Roman website. Catholic faithful. So rcf.org. Right, and that media, M E D I A media at rcf.org, or confidential at rcf.org, or my personal email address is stephen.brady at att.net. Okay. And uh, so they can send that through there. Because if, if I get some pranks, I'll block them. But it's Stephen with a PH, S T E P H N dot Brady, B R A D Y at att.net. Because I can't promise you great results. <laughs> But all these little pieces come they together. They come together. It's like when I do my thousand piece puzzles. Yeah. It looks so overwhelming when I first begin. You know, I'm just trying That's to get that border analogy. in. Yeah. Right. And, but and eventually it, you start seeing the section all in pink and then the section in yellow yeah. and they start connecting. I did an interview 14 years ago of a straight kid that was a Hispanic young man, Thomas Munoz, because it's public. Oh, yeah. I've seen him. He was on the street. I, I, I gave it to the hierarchy. I gave it to the uh, the Vatican, the papal nuncio, and I did nothing with it. That was 15 years ago. And recently, because of the scandal, the lawsuit in New York uh, regarding North American College in Rome, and according to church militants, someone connected to Cardinal Ratzinger, Pope Benedict, provided them with a copy of the video, which was... Uh, Basically, Munoz talking about the orgy he attended. Mm -hmm. And uh, so With it's the bishops. Something I did 15 years ago that I'd almost forgotten about. I, they asked me questions about it. I told them, I told them my answers. And, the, uh, <coughs> and I'm going to say this publicly as well. The lawsuit uh, Anthony Gorgia has against Dolan and the North American College in New York, it's a federal lawsuit. They called me. And I said, you have to subpoena me for a deposition. And then I'll tell you everything. You know, because I know about, I had some contacts, some interactions with Bishop Lucas. Uh, I never really uh, met. Well, you've got a lot of information. I'm looking at the clock yes. here. So we're almost at an hour. And Stephen, I just want to thank you for sharing this. And you have an open invitation because we want to get this word out, not because we're slandering, but because we're going, you know what? You and I are just pieces of the puzzle. I could never do what you do, but I am a voice. I am a, a host. I, you know, I, I'll put it out there. Um, but I want to ask you, so it's kind of like a, a fill in the blank. Um, first thing. You kind of answered this already, but in a very short snippet, name one thing our, my viewers should do differently as a result of something they heard today. Was your answer already, stop paying the church, or is there something else? Name one well, thing you'd have us do differently. Stop giving the money because that's what fuels their corruption. Okay. Stop giving the money. But you've got to live by example. I mean, you never know what one positive thing you do regarding the faith will affect somebody. Right. And... Uh, if I may, a priest told me he got a knock on the door at 10 o'clock at night for confession. The guy wanted to hear confession. He said, why do you come to me at 10 o'clock at night? I've been away from the church for 30 years. I was at dinner, and I saw a family with children make the sign of the cross before they ate. That moved that wow. man to come back to the church wow. after 30 years. So do, what, do, do what's right. Do what's proper. Love your fellow man enough to tell him the truth. It's not an act of charity to allow one's neighbor to run headlong into right. cell. hell. And uh, casting the first stone is about judging their soul. But you've got to judge their actions. Absolutely. That's a really good way to do it. One last thing. When I die, I will know my life has been a success if. If I play some part in cleaning up the corruption of the Catholic hierarchy. Because there's no greater entity. There's no more the positive, Church. nor greater thing for society than the Catholic Church and and uh, christ and his church so we do our part to clean up the mess and that'll fix the society that'll but young ladies demand respect of the young men well let's do a show on that Maybe let's do a show on the yeah. because you're a dad of seven so yeah. that would be because that's right on my wheelhouse you know i okay. teach communication <laughs> between the sexes as well right. so um 
Well, I just want to say we are going to have a link underneath this website. Just look below it and you'll be able to contact Stephen Brady, see some of the information that he has offered today. And I do want to ask you to say a prayer for him and for his family because the work he's doing is not popular. Um, he needs the stamina. He needs the right people to come to him, but he just needs the Lord's grace. And you can absolutely give him that through your prayers. Also, I know that he funds as a 501c3 strictly on donations from people coming in on the outside so that he can continue to do this work. You can go to rcf.org and find out how you can donate. So romancatholicfaithful.org. But um, I do have to take us off the air. Stephen, I want to thank you for being thank a you. guest. You have been, um, I just praise God for what you're doing and you've you've opened my eyes to so many things and um, I'm, I'm just grateful you're doing it, that you're fighting. Thank you so much you for know. the opportunity. You're protecting Anytime. more than just your seven kids. You're protecting mine as well. I'll be glad to come back and speak about feminism. That's a big Well, let's do about. that because we, oh, we've, all right. So we're going to, right. that's a deal right. between you and me. Right. But until Thank then, you. we have to go off the air. I am Dr. Christine Bacon. You've been watching Breakfast with Bacon. And I want to remind you always to live your life sunny side up.